happen to? You see what I'm saying? It's garbage. All right, y'all, y'all need to rethink how y'all going to do this. And um, and for those that is in this squad that do really care about Christ, man up and get up out of there. Now, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Again, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, that's a question. He said, be not deceived. Nobody could explain on the last video why Paul had to say, be not deceived. He said, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You understand? Why did he have to say, be not deceived? Because everybody knows that that land is for the Israelites to inherit. Everybody knows that New Jerusalem is for the children of Israel. But everybody's starting to seem like they don't understand that only a remnant of the children of Israel shall be saved. You see what I'm saying? Why did he say be not deceived? Again, because YouTubers, because of demons, devils, false prophets, false teachers sent from Satan was going to come in the last days and teach the children of Israel garbage like this. This is 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. This is the banger right here. It says, um, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god you, you, uh, again you 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 have to be on top of it right you have to have the same conversation right no one said that they were going to be a part of that salvation and walking it with yahweh which is the inheritance of that kingdom right the same way like if my grandpa died right and i have no kids and my grandpa dies i get his inheritance but then when i have my kids they benefit from that said this. They didn't inherit it, but they benefit from it because I inherited it and I'm their dad. And of course, I pass it on. Stop it. Get some help. Put the crack pipe down. <laughs> this is retarded. You just said that your kids wasn't going to inherit it, but your daddy who inherited it was going to pass it down to you so you can inherit it. And then you're going to pass it on to your kids. Nigga, when you pass it down to your kids, that's an inheritance. Get the fuck. <laughs> yeah, dog. Niggas is crazy. Right? So that one third and then a numerable multitude attached to them are going to inherit the kingdom. But all the Israelites will enter into and partake in it. But all the Israelites will enter into and partake in it. He just said all the Israelites is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Simple yes or no question. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Just yes or no. If these Israelites' righteousness don't exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, will they in any case enter into the kingdom of heaven yes or no that's what we waiting for yes or no go against the bible it wouldn't be your first time doing it <laughs> let's go to christ and see what christ say because we can't rely on you let's go to the word of god let's, let's do some red letter for a minute let's see if they still gonna enter into the kingdom according to the bible this is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20 is the point. For I say unto you, 
that accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You understand? So when you telling these people that they're going to enter into the kingdom just because they're Israelites, that's a lie. Because Christ said that unless their righteousness shall exceed the righteousness, meaning pass the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You just spoke exactly against what Christ just said. And you want thousands of people to listen to you instead of the son of God because you're a false prophet. That prophecy will never come to pass. Now, one thing that I should have mentioned in the very first video that I did on ST Deacon. When you get to verse 19, where it says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. One thing that I should have mentioned was that I don't have a problem with that, with the view of that represented status in the kingdom in terms of some people are going to be lower and some people are going to be higher. The hierarchy, I have no problem with that. I was simply reading a comment that was on the comment board. So let's take it in that direction instead of the last direction. So even if we look at it in that way, that these people that broke the least commandment are going to be lower than the others that taught the commandment and kept the commandment, I will find it. I will find it that um, a lot of us could agree that your righteousness can still exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, although you broke one of the least commandments. You see what I'm saying? But that don't change the fact that Christ made it crystal clear in verse 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see? In no case. There's no way. Come on. Now peep this, right? Just to keep it 100, I'm not the biggest fan of always going to the Strongs to try to prove my point because we all know that the Strongs is not always right. You know what I'm saying? Just keeping it 100. It's not always right. But in this case, when you go into Matthew 5, where it says no case, this is what you get. It says, um, what the definition is, it says that is G3756 and G3361. It says a double negative, strengthening the denial not at all, any more at all by any, in parentheses, no means, neither, never, no, at all, in no case or wise, nor ever not, at all in any wise. You see what I'm saying? So that's strengthening the denial, meaning never. That's what that means. It means never. Okay? So when Christ say, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, Brother, you're not getting in the kingdom of heaven. Stop lying. Okay? Stop lying. Because when you tell people garbage like that, that they just going to get in, now you're saying that you don't need Christ. I don't care how you're trying to package it. I don't care who the dummies are that's going to follow you. You can't trick everybody. Huh? You understand what I'm saying? You can't trick everybody. Now, let me ask you this straight up. Let me ask you this just straight up the top. Simple yes or no, straight up. Will Israelites whose righteousness do not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees and do not believe on Christ enter into the kingdom of heaven in any case? Yes or no? Yes or no, just straight up, yes or no. Will they still enter into the kingdom of heaven at any time? Since you say there's no stipulation, which one is it? Tell the people how you really feel. Tell them the truth. Because see, today a lot of people are going to realize you don't really believe that we need the Messiah, man. You just talk that talk. You talk with a forked tongue. Y'all don't really believe that. Y'all don't really believe that we even got to keep the commandments. You feel me? Y'all just act as playing a role in front of them cameras. That's why when you go back home, you like to be in the club. When them cameras go off, you like to be in the club. You feel what I'm saying? Around them whores. You feel me? Being a sugar daddy. It's crazy, man. Y'all the false prophets. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. 
It says, Yahweh Shah answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, Yahweh Shah answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, let's do some question time. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm going to give you an easy one. Little Nas X, right? Little Nas X. Is Little Nas X born of the water and of the spirit? This should be simple. Little Nas X, right? Is Little Nas X born of the water and of the spirit? You can visually see the lifestyle that he chooses. He chooses homosexuality. He chooses Satan worship. So it would be pretty easy for us to see that as spiritual men and say, no, he's not born. He's not born again. He's not born of the water and of the spirit. So if little Nas X dies in his homosexuality, can he see the kingdom? Matter of fact, can he enter into the kingdom of God? If little Nas X dies in his homosexuality, can he enter into the kingdom of God? Yes or no? <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all niggas is crazy. The LGBTQ community, pedophiles, transsexuals, if they are not born of, of, of the water and of the spirit, can they enter into the kingdom of God? Come on, man. But see, with your doctrine, you teach that you can be a transsexual all your life and a pedophile all your life and all of these things and molest little children all your life. You teach that you can be a Torah only and blaspheme Christ all your life and still enter into the kingdom of God because you're the devil. You don't got the spirit of God on you. you that's why you can't, teach this, you can't teach the word of the most high. It burns you alive to even hear this, man. You see what I'm saying? This is the book of Hebrews chapter 5. I'm going to start at 5 real quick, man. It says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And by being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Okay? He became the author of of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Stop lying. Stop telling these niggas and these females that they go get eternal life whether they obey God or not. Whether they believe in Hamashiach or not. You're an unclean spirit and you're a wannabe. You're a fraud. And it's a lot of y'all out there. But I'm pointing at you though. You're a fraud. You're a phony, man. <laughs> Straight up. Okay? And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him. How can you read that and turn around and say, you still going to get eternal salvation whether you obey him or not? You're a fraud. Only a fraud could do that. You can't show me one scripture where Christ taught that you are still going to get salvation whether you believe on Hamashiach or not. Little Nas X don't obey Christ. Transsexuals, pedophiles, murderers, drug dealers, and the whole nine. Everything on that list on 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 down to 10, don't obey Christ. Don't obey the Most High. That's not obedience. You see what I'm saying? That's the stipulation, boy. 
the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Not unto every person that's black. Not unto every person that's a, a Puerto Rican of Negroid descent. Not unto everybody just because you're a Hebrew. Okay? Unto all them that obey him. Do you even know what that means? I don't think so. Y'all brothers need to come out of these little organizations, man. That's why you got people looking at us like we crazy. It's because of people like you. You shouldn't even be on the front line with this, man. Because you're a liar. You're, you're the devil. You're the goddamn devil. Straight up. And that's why y'all been in the clubs. That's why your members is catching STDs. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> man, you suck as a leader, dog. I'm just going to keep it 100. You suck. You're a failure. You, you, you have failed God's people. I'm just keeping it 100. And this is embarrassing. We're wicked. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they would judge every man according to their works. There it goes again, your works. Verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Read that aside. Revelation chapter 20, verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not again. Oh, since they're going to live again. Right? Right? Go ahead. Until the thousand years were finished. So, now, so we're, 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 we're. No, 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 don't go on. Nah, come on, bro. Y'all ain't got to do that. Come on, stop. Israel, you ain't got a brothers. Come on, bro, brother, stop. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't got a Buddha, man, man. Hold on, wait a minute. Time out, time out. Listen, 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 listen. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to him. Come on, man. We gotta, we gotta build him up. We don't want to just tear the brother down. He took, he took enough of his beating for the day. Let's try to build this man up, all right? Let's 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 get in the script. Maybe he can learn something. Let's show the man context. He was never he's probably never taught it. You see what I'm saying? He was never taught it. Let's show him context. Now look, y'all gotta understand something, okay? Where I started at, I started at Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, and verse 15. Okay? The part that I ended on said, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, okay? Now, <clears throat> the foolish novice mistake that he made was probably any YouTuber would make because they don't really understand the Bible or really even read the Bible. They're busy in the clubs with half-naked women, you know what I'm saying? So I understand. But the mistake that he made was he went back, like, how many? He, he went all the way back to uh to verse what? Verse, verse 5. Yeah, he went all the way back to verse 5, like with no context. You see what I'm saying? So after hearing me say, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, he read verse 5 as if that came right after the verse that I read at the end when it's telling you how it was going to happen. Verse 5 said, but the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. You see what I'm saying? So when you hear that right after verse 15 and you say it as if it came after verse 15, it is sound like after people was cast into the lake of fire, God is going to just pull you out of the lake of fire and, and, and dip you in water and cool you off and then put you in the kingdom when that's just not the case. That would be going against the whole entire Bible. So for viewers sake and for edification, edification purposes, like you. I'm going to start at verse 1, okay? And we're going to read down to the verse that he read so that y'all can get some understanding on what that meant. Because that can confuse a lot of people that don't know. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up 
and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. Verse four. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shah and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, so verse four gives you the context. Okay, it says again, and I saw the souls, okay, the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shah. And for the word of God. Okay. So these people that were beheaded. You know if you beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shah for the word. It's safe to say that you was martyred. You see what I'm saying. These people right here. They was martyred. Okay. It says. And which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. Or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So that's the people that reigned with him a thousand years. According to this scripture right here, these people were martyred. Okay. All the Israelites, all of the righteous Israelites, they wasn't martyred. You, it's like y'all got to understand context. Okay. Verse five, it says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. You see what I'm saying? The dead in Christ is going to rise first. The martyrs, those that were martyred, it's a different glory. You see what I'm saying? Verse six, it says, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. You see what I'm saying? That's the first resurrection. That's not that's not the the the, the second. You see what I'm saying? Y'all got to understand what this is all talking about. Remember Daniel when it explained some was going to rise to good and some was going to rise to bad? I'm going to pull that in a second because it all ties in. Okay? But these people right here on the first resurrection, it's almost as if the first resurrection is sort of like a split. The martyrs are going to run, run with Christ for a thousand years. Then after that thousand, the rest of the righteous are going to run, are going to rise with Christ. That is the first resurrection. So it was done in two sections. That's all that it's saying. Now, when you get all the way down to 12, that's why it's completely different. But for the sake of context, I'm not going to jump all the way down to 12 because from what I can see, some people have still never read this chapter in their life. OK, and it's really not a long chapter. It's really almost finished. So I'm going to just go on to verse seven. OK, verse seven, it says, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of who is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and can pass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Verse 12, this is where I came in. It says, and I saw the dead. Okay, so this happened after that. All of this has happened afterwards. After verse 5, what you tried to read, boy. Okay, verse 12, it says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. 
and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. You see what I'm saying? So there's still people being judged. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Remember? You said it was no stipulation. You only earning a spot on the first go round. This is off a of promise. This has absolutely nothing to do with anybody's works at all. The kingdom is based on a promise, bro. Not on works. So if we understand that, we understand that it don't matter what the two thirds do. You got mad. Let's come here. <laughs> Shut your stupid ass up. <laughs> say that fuck. <laughs> come here, say it. It's embarrassing. The Bible cuts you again, okay? Because they're being judged according to their works. Verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You understand? That's what the Bible is saying. There is no prophecy when God pulls anybody out of the lake of fire and dips them off in cold water and says, yeah, now you can run around and go play in the kingdom now. You see what I'm saying? It, 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 there's, there's no prophecy where he says, yeah, you know, you wasn't written in the book of life, but but now I'm going to take you out the fire and I'm going to write your name in the book of life and I'm going to let you just come in the kingdom and do whatever you want. Even though you didn't believe on my son and you didn't believe on me and you just worship Satan your whole life. It don't work like that. Stop listening to false prophets. Okay. These people are our entertainers. They're YouTubers, dog. That's what they do.